Hey everyone and welcome back. So at this stage we should be fairly comfortable with the unwrapping process. So jumping into the more complex model should be no problem at this stage. Uh, and for that reason I'm going to go through a few little shortcuts and a few things that we've not done in the past which will kind of bring together and solidify all of the processes that we already have made so far. Uh, now the first thing we want to take a note of with the bucket is that this object actually has quite a lot of modifiers on so if we go to the modifiers all of the planks have at least two, the bands have two uh, and then the screws did have modifiers but we've removed those now. And I mention this because if we were to do something like joining them all together uh, so the idea of the final outcome is going to have all of these as one object so if we were to do that now grab everything press Control J there's a huge issue where all of the modifiers get applied in the wrong order some of them get applied to components that don't need the modifiers and you get something looking pretty horrendous like that so we will find a way to go around that and the other thing is that I wanted to take a shortcut so we don't have to individually unwrap all of these planks so we're going to do that first of all before we apply the modifier before we do that I just want to get a base understanding of what the UVs will look like so if we have all of the individual components selected to begin with go to UV editing go into edit mode we can see that this is kind of all laid out a little bit sporadically at the moment so I'm just going to press uh, A to select everything and then U in this window to unwrap everything and that actually uh, annoyingly looks pretty good as it is but we'll see if that's still the case when we get to applying the modifiers because I was actually expecting this to be the harder tutorial I made the mistake of not planning this ahead and doing some like pre-recording tests and to be honest you could just leave it looking like that but I think that's only working because at the moment uh, these are still single faces so that has been very easy to unwrap the plank and the same for the rings as well um, whereas when we export this the modifiers will be applied so we do need to take that into account so this probably will be a little bit harder than just the unwrap we've got here. Back in the modeling window though what I want to do is just go around and apply all of the modifiers for the planks so unfortunately it would be nice if we could select a few of these and apply them all at once and the way that you do this is you apply the modifiers top down so we'd apply the solidify first remember we've touched on this previously we need all of the geometry there for the bevel to work properly and then we apply the bevel uh, but unfortunately we can see that that has applied it for the most recent one we had selected but the first two were not applied so we're going to need to go through and do this one by one per plank but this will save us a little bit of time with unwrapping at least. Okay, so I've just gone ahead and sped that up in the background very quickly. Uh, it's a process that doesn't really need too much in the way of explanation. So just follow through, make sure you have all of the modifiers applied on the planks first of all. Then grab any of the planks that you have, go into edit mode. And if we go back into the UV editing window, we can see we should get a slightly different unwrap now. We're gonna come in and start making our edits. So I'm just going to zoom in quickly in object mode, go back to edit mode here. Um, and I think, again, we can get away with just one seam around these edges, so I've Alt Shift selected these. I'm going to press Control and E to mark our seam. And if you haven't already, again, just to recap, make sure you've gone into UV. Live unwrapping is selected in both. And we can see again, like I said, this is now a slightly more complex UV map than what we had previously. The next thing is I think we just want to ease these edges up. So we can just select these so that it can cut these apart a little bit. Press Control and E and mark seam there. And you can see all that that's really done is it's just allowed those to split off, but it's not made it its own separate island. So we're just going to do that again here. And that is now a lot cleaner just because we've got that kind of warped wood going on. The, the bend is, a, is making that happen. Now I've spent the time to do it on that one. And the reason being is that we can now come back in. We can select all of these. So we're going to do this trick again where we select everything. Make sure that the one that you have UV unwrapped is the last one you select. Press Control in L and transfer UV maps. It means that we can come in here and we can see all of this kind of lines up because we've left all of this geometry apart from the sizing, which isn't going to be an issue here. We've left all of this exactly the same. So these are just copies of each other, exactly the same bevels, exactly the same amount of verts and everything. So where we've got these splits and everything and the uh, the easing, that's going to apply to all of them. So that means we have all of these applied. Now, the really good thing about this as well is we can actually get away with these overlapping each other. It's just going to share the same space here, which is going to be perfectly fine. So this is another trick. If you've got something where the verts are almost exactly the same, on a per component section, which I kind of touched on with the fence, but because we added the chips and everything, 
and the little nicks and the fences. Uh, we couldn't do that because there were very slight variations, but because these are all exactly the same, apart from some scaling, they can share the UV space, which means if you were kind of restricted with the amount of space you had in a texture, this would be a great way to go about it because it can just all overlap and take up the same area. Now, the one thing to note is if you're texture mapping, when you paint this on, so say you're painting the edges um, and adding some detail like cracks and stuff, every plank would obviously have exactly the same texture, the same uh, cracks in the same spaces so in some cases if it's going to be very visible then that's going to be a little bit off-putting uh, it's going to be very obvious to the eye at least that you're just reusing the same texture over and over being a solid color this isn't going to be a problem at all so i just wanted to show that little trick uh, now that done we just want to focus on the bands very quickly so in a similar way we want to make sure that the modifier is ready now again this is going into the destructive modeling where once we apply these we can't really go back we're stuck with the results that we have um, but again we know that we're not going to make any kind of high poly version of this this is the final game ready asset so at this stage um, i'm happy that this looks good that we are ready to get this and uh, put it in the engine. So we're going to apply our solidify, apply our bevel. And again, that has the edge loop pretty much sorted out for us. Uh, we can come in here. If we just select everything, I press, I think with this, the way that this is already showing over here, if we just press unwrap, uh, there's a slight change. There's not very much stretching at all. And because it's just a perfect half cylinder, we kind of get away with that. I think that looks fine. So that's gonna be perfectly fine for our final unwrap. We don't need to add any extra seams or detail there. And I've got a feeling we're gonna be able to do the same thing with the screws. So if we just grab the screws and the nails, or the nails, uh, go into edit mode, unwrap this. We've again already touched on this with the fences. Um, there is a bit of stretching, that's not gonna be important. The other option is to add a seam on each of these so it splits in half perfectly, but that's adding kind of extra detail for no extra benefit. So I'm gonna leave this. We know what that shape is, that will make sense. We can scale this down if I'm in the right window. We can scale this down and quite easily put this into our metal section here and that's gonna be perfectly fine. Okay, so the final thing before we join these together, I just, as I was rotating then, notice that we left the uh, floorboards out. So if we do the same again, we want to make sure that we have our modifiers applied. So we're gonna do that for each of these. And we're also gonna to wanna to make sure that we've unwrapped these as well. So I'm just gonna apply the modifiers and then we will double check the UV wrapping. So I think what we could probably get away with here is we can unwrap this one, see how that looks. So the unwrap there seems to be fine, um, which I don't quite trust. So I'm just going to grab all of the edges along the middle and press Control and E to mark a seam there, split those in half. And yep, apparently that does look fine. And now because this one's just a mirror, we can do the same trick again as we had earlier. So we'll select this one and then reselect this one, press Control and L and transfer UVs. And that means the UV for this one's gonna be fine as well. And again, sharing the same space. And we can do the same for these two. So we'll just pick one. Uh, we'll unwrap this to see how it looks to begin with. I still think it's gonna be best to add a seam around the middle. So Alt, Shift, Select, Control E, Mark Seam. <laughs> this kind of shows us that we've got some extra geometry here. So that was quite a handy thing to do. So I'm gonna select everything, search for merge by distance. And we can see at the bottom here, I've actually removed 14 verts where it was just, I think the bevel was uh, making things overlap. So before going any further, I'll just make sure I've done the same thing here. So merge by distance, get rid of those 14 verts again. Now go back into edit mode, make sure that doesn't affect the unwrap, it change the size a little bit. Just double check here, we've not got any weirdness, we do. Uh, we've got some doubles here, but they're not quite close enough. So what I'm gonna do, I think they might actually be with it in a distance where it will just collapse those down and not make it look terrible. So we're gonna do the same again, uh, merge by distance here. And that seems to have gone perfectly fine, which is great. And do the same on this object. So go into edit mode, merge by distance, UV map will be fine. Okay, so those done, like I said, we'll go back into this one. We've got that UV. So we can select this one, shift select this one, control L, transfer UVs, and then this one will have the same UV. Uh, now that transfer didn't work, so something must have really changed this one at some point. So what I'm going to do is I'll just unwrap this one, give it its own unwrap. Um, and it looks as though we might even need to come in and just recut the seam here and that will fix that up for us. Okay, so that's all of our button planks accounted for as well, which means we can now press A to select everything in object mode. We can press Control and J to join all of these. So that is now one object. We can rename this to SM underscore bucket. And you'll see that the uh, shading's gone a bit funny here. So that is just because we want to go back down to our normals, go back and tick the auto smooth and everything is now back to how it should have been looking. 
So like I said, a little bit of destructive modeling there, a few things we had to fix and update as we're going through, uh, but nothing too serious. And that is now game ready uh, and can be exported with the modifiers applied. And more importantly, we can come back in and put all of our UVs in place. So uh, what I'm gonna do is because I don't want to press unwrap to put all of these in an average on the island, because it will kind of ruin some of our progress where these are sharing the, uh, the UV space. I'm going to go into face mode, so three for face mode. And I'm just going to select things that I want to move out of the way to begin with. And I'm going to move these down here. So again, with the sync selection, it means you can grab something here and affect it in the UV space. I'm do the same again. So double tap A to get rid of those and then do the side planks. Um, and it looks as actually when I joined this, it separated them anyway. So we've lost a little bit of our progress there, but it only seems to have separated them out into two different maps, which I'm happy with, that is fine. And then once we've got those, uh, we can move those off somewhere. And then we also need to account for the top of the faces down here because they've been split. Um, and it also looks as though we just need to grab some of our selection here so that these are not overlapping with something completely different. Okay, and we can tidy this up in a moment and we'll just get this. Find out what that's for. That's for one of the faces has its own thing, but that should be fine. Just to overlap that with this one again. So this is what it should be part of. And we can leave the screws there because that's where I wanted the screws to be anyway. So what we want to do is we're going to consider the rings first of all. We'll put this in a dark kind of metal space, which is what I had here. So a nice dark metallic. And then everything else, if we pack these together, we can move these over, just double tapping a to deselect and select everything, box selecting all of the bits that I want to pack into the final section of the wood color. Um, we can actually come down here and, and then I'm just going to box select all of this over here, move this and rotate it just a little bit so that we can line it up next to this one. And that is a lot easier now to pack into a square texture space. So I think the final wooden color I'm using is this more chocolatey wood color, which looks quite nice, I think, on the bucket. And of course, we need to make sure that we apply the material so that we can actually see this, because I don't think we've done that yet. So if we go to add a new material, add our texture, and there we go. That is exactly what I wanted the bucket to look like. Okay, so with that done, we are ready to export this and get all of our assets out of our Blender scene and into the game engines. And like I said, I'll do a video of just exporting it and getting it into two main popular engines being Unity and then Unreal, just to see the processes of getting these in. And then I will probably go into a little bit more detail on those engines just to make the scene, set the scene up, get some lighting in there and show these working to get the whole process finalized. As I mentioned, we started off with all of this looking very sporadic. There were a lot of different objects in here. We've now tidied this up. So we've got just our two rock models, the fence model, all as its own thing, the post and the bucket, all as their own things as well. Uh, but having this collection system really does help to work inside of like creating a big scene like this and toggling the visibility of big, large groups of objects and things like that. So that's been pretty cool to work with. So I'll leave that video here for now though. As always, if you enjoy the videos or find them useful, please do leave a like and share the video around. That, that always helps and is greatly appreciated. And of course, if you wanted to be kept up to date with any of the content coming from any of the playlists on the channel, do consider subscribing and make sure you hit the notification bell to get those updates. As ever though, thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.